Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now let us take a look at what we want to discuss this week. Given the following information, enthalpy change of a formation of carbon monoxide is minus 110 kilojoule per mole. Enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide is minus 393 kilojoule per mole. So we have two things that we want to talk about. First one is which is more stable, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. And the second thing that we want to discuss is which enthalpy change of combustion is more exothermic. Enthalpy change of combustion of carbon or enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide. Now, what is the concept that we can use to try to determine stability involving my species carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide? And how do I compare the magnitude in terms of enthalpy change terms? Who is more exothermic? Who is less exothermic? Now, interestingly, what we can do is we can use the energy level diagram to do comparison, which some of us might not be aware that we can make use of my energy level diagram. Because when we do energetics, the topic on energetics, usually what we do is we use the energy level diagram to draw bond Haber cycle, which is involving ionic compounds, correct? So some of us might have this idea thinking that energy level diagram is equivalent to bond Haber cycle, which is not true. Uh, please keep this in mind. Energy level diagram is just a representation of my energy cycle, working out the relationship between some of the enthalpy change terms that is given. And of course, we know that we have a y-axis. And this y-axis tells me something about the process. If it is an endothermic process, we will draw the process or the reaction pointing up. If it is exothermic, then we will draw the reaction pointing down. So that's the y direction, which is the enthalpy. Now, let us try to put all this in, into an energy level diagram, involving enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide and enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide. Now, at least what we should be able to recall is enthalpy change of formation is forming one mole of your compound from elements in a standard state. So the relationship between Enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide and enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide will be elements in a standard state because form carbon monoxide from elements in a standard state, form carbon dioxide from elements in a standard state. So with this as a basis, uh, let us try to draw this energy level diagram. Now the diagram is here. First, let us consider my elements in the standard state because I know that formation of my carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, all comes from elements in a standard state. So what I have here will be this zero value. My elements in a standard state will be here, carbon and oxygen. Fairly simple. And by definition, the enthalpy of elements in a standard state is a zero value. So if let's say this were a structural question and we want to present this as our answer, please remember if it is elements in a standard state, we actually have to indicate this enthalpy as a zero value, otherwise they were minus marks from us. Huh? We do need to know the enthalpy of elements is defined as a zero value, so we need to indicate this as a zero value. Let us move on and we consider formation of carbon monoxide. Now we know that enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide is minus 110 kilojoule per mole, and therefore the process involving formation it should be pointing down, exothermic term. So this arrow pointing down to give me this state here will be my carbon monoxide. All right? So this arrow, which represents the enthalpy change of formation of carbon monoxide, the value is minus 110. So if it is a negative sign, we will draw this pointing down. Positive sign, we will draw this pointing up. If it is endothermic, the arrow will be pointing up. Now next, how about enthalpy change of formation of CO2? Now for CO2 formation, the magnitude is minus 393 kilojoule per mole. So we will draw an arrow that is pointing down because again, this is a negative value, exothermic term, this is pointing down. But since in terms of the magnitude, 393, obviously the magnitude is bigger than 110, correct? So this arrow, I will have to draw a longer arrow, starting from elements, longer arrow all the way down here. And this will be the enthalpy level for my carbon dioxide. Usually we don't really need to draw the scale. We just need to make sure that if this is minus 393 and this is minus 110, obviously 393 is bigger than 110. So make sure this arrow involving formation of carbon dioxide, the minus 393, it is a longer arrow than minus 110. So that will be sufficient eh, for us to 
represent this energy level diagram. And once we have this, we can do the comparison. Now let's take a look at this first comparison, which is more stable, carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. Now what I've done is I have the same energy level diagram. And all we need to do is we just need to compare in terms of the enthalpy level, which one is higher up, it will be less stable, which one is lower down in terms of enthalpy, which will be more stable. Now the idea involving enthalpy is just the heat content. So if you have a higher enthalpy, it means that you have more heat content and this will suggest that you are less stable. And if you are further down this enthalpy, if you have low enthalpy, it will mean that you have less heat content and therefore you'll be more stable. It's actually fairly simple. The higher up you are, the less stable you'll be. The lower down you are, the more stable you'll be. So if I want to compare carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide, it's fairly simple. Carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide, clearly carbon monoxide is higher up in terms of enthalpy and carbon dioxide is lower down in terms of enthalpy. So this will mean that my carbon monoxide, since it has a higher enthalpy, higher H, so this is less stable. Carbon monoxide will be less stable. Whereas for carbon dioxide, it has a lower enthalpy, so the lower enthalpy term will be more stable. So if I want to compare these two species, very simple, which is more stable, carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide, I see which term is lower in enthalpy. In this case, it's my CO2, so carbon dioxide will be more stable than carbon monoxide. So the first question is easy by comparing enthalpy level, which we can only show using an energy level diagram because energy level diagram takes into consideration the y-axis and if it is exo, we will draw this pointing down, endo, we will draw this pointing up. And when there's a difference in magnitude, usually we will have to reflect it in terms of the length of the arrow that we are drawing. So because of that, we can use the energy level diagram to more or less uh, compare which term has higher enthalpy, which term has lower enthalpy, who is more stable, who is less stable. Energy level diagram allows us to do that. All right, next, how about comparing your exothermic term involving enthalpy change of combustion. Now, which enthalpy change of combustion is more exothermic? Combustion of carbon or combustion of carbon monoxide? Now, what we have here is in terms of formation. So we have to think of, okay, what do we mean by enthalpy change of combustion for each of these terms? Now, what do we mean by combustion of carbon? Now, if you think about it, if you are burning carbon in excess oxygen, so the product will be carbon dioxide. So therefore, the process that quantifies uh, enthalpy change of combustion of my carbon will just be something like this. You'll just be burning carbon in excess oxygen to give me CO2. So this process will represent the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon, which you notice uh, is exactly here, correct? So these elements here, carbon plus oxygen, will be the reactant involving burning carbon in excess oxygen, and the product will be here, carbon dioxide, will be this. What this means is, this process involving carbon plus O2 to give me CO2, in this case, we write this as enthalpy change of formation of CO2, which is true, because I'm forming one more of your compound from elements in a standard state. But this is also equal, in terms of the value, also equal to the enthalpy change of combustion of my carbon. Because if you think about the process involving combustion of carbon, I'm burning carbon in excess oxygen, one more of carbon in excess oxygen to give me CO2. So the reactant is exactly the same, the product is exactly the same. So this arrow that we have here, let me highlight this, this arrow that we have here will represent the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon. All right. So combustion of carbon, we've talked about it. Now next, how about combustion of carbon monoxide? Now if you're burning carbon monoxide, what do we end up with? If I burn carbon monoxide in excess oxygen, I'll also end up with carbon dioxide. So if I burn carbon monoxide in oxygen, I should be getting carbon dioxide. Now this is not balanced, but we just want to focus on the reactants and the product. So carbon monoxide combustion will just give me carbon dioxide and my carbon monoxide will be here, right? Since this is my carbon monoxide and my CO2 is here, my carbon dioxide is here. What this means is, I can draw this arrow pointing down, and this arrow that is pointing down 
will represent the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide. Let me put this in here. This arrow from carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide will just be the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide. And let me just highlight this uh, again for easier comparison. So now we have these two terms. Combustion of carbon, which is this term here. Combustion of carbon monoxide, which is this term here. Now the question is, which one is more exothermic? It's essentially just comparing which arrow is longer, correct? The longer the arrow, the bigger the magnitude. And since both arrows are pointing down, both are exothermic. And if I compare these two terms, clearly uh, the orange arrow, which represents the combustion of carbon, is longer than the green arrow, which represents the combustion of carbon monoxide. So if I'm asking you, okay, which term is more exothermic? Obviously, this is the longer arrow. The orange arrow is longer. So combustion of carbon is more exothermic than the combustion of carbon monoxide. Because if you burn both of them, it will give me the same product. You end up with carbon dioxide. And so therefore, again, using this energy level diagram, I can compare the magnitude of the enthalpy change terms. Effectively, when we look at the energy level diagram, we can just interpret this as, okay, which arrow is longer? The longer the arrow, the bigger the magnitude. If both of them are pointing down, so the one with a longer arrow, the enthalpy change term will be more exothermic. So I think, again, uh, we want to have this awareness. I can make use of the energy level diagram to compare enthalpy change term, which term is more exothermic, which term is less exothermic. We can also do the same for endothermic terms, all right? If both arrows are pointing up, who is more endo, who is less endo? Using the energy level diagram is very easy. I just compare the length of the arrows. So in this case, which term is more exothermic? Enthalpy change of combustion of carbon or enthalpy change of combustion of carbon monoxide? Obviously, yeah, this should be the combustion of carbon is more exothermic. All right, so hopefully with this discussion, we will have a better appreciation involving making use of energy level diagram to compare magnitude of enthalpy change terms and to compare stability of species. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.